Osi Yumanura, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Will. It's really nice to be here, man. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you. Well, look, we really appreciate you taking the time out to chat with us. And, well, you've still kept busy this year, clearly, with the TV show, but also you've been doing your 888 sports show, who worked with us at TalkSport 2 with Steve-O the Madman. And so, you know, you've kept yourself pretty busy, even though it's been a, a weird year. Yeah, I have, man. And um, I think it's all down to the fact that the NFL continued to play games um, throughout the pandemic. And um, it, it allowed us to do the job that we, we, we so much love and we're able to continue to do the things that we're accustomed to doing, even though we're not actually in um, at the Super Bowl right now, having the usual discussions that we would be having. But at least we're still able to cover the sport that we love. And um, big shout out to the NFL for being able to uh, do all the things necessary to keep this season going. Well, on that very point, there's not going to be a lot of people that receive the level of love that you received from Tom Brady last <laughs> night. And we can, we can hear yeah. that now. My guy. <laughs> What's happy, up, Tom? Are you? I'm, happy, I'm happy I'm not playing you this weekend. <laughs> man, that's awesome, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good talking to you, man. man it's, it's really good talking to you too, man. You know, that's, that 2007 game is one of my least favorite football memories, just so you know. <laughs> but probably because I had a lot of you on top of me with grass paint on the back. You and Trey and, and Justin. And, um, you know, you guys had a great defense. And you, you know, you guys were – an incredible, an incredible opponent that day. You guys deserve to win. So the guy has gone to 10 Super Bowls, OC, and you inflicted one of the worst football days of his career. Yeah, I mean, it was, um, honestly, that was my first time actually having a conversation with Tom um, on, on the football, about football in, in, in any kind of fashion. I think we've acknowledged each other on the football field, but off of that, that was my first time ever speaking to him. And um, to hear some of the things he said and, you know, to actually have a talk to him and, you know, see where his mind was and, and understand that he still thinks about what we were able to do um, in 2007. It really was an incredible experience for me, man, just having the opportunity uh, to, to have a discussion with arguably, not even arguably, this is hands down the greatest quarterback and probably the greatest football player we've ever seen. Going back, because it's amazing to think, and we'll all talk about this all week, but the, that was 13 years ago. Yeah. And again, you know, a decade ago, and yet he's still there. He's still going. Yeah. Yeah, it's really incredible, man. And, and like you said, it was 13 years ago, but 13 years ago, he had been in the NFL like 10 years at the time. And so um, it's the fact that he's still playing at such a high level, threw for over 40 touchdowns this year, had one of his best statistical seasons at the age of 43, it's really magnificent what this guy was able to do, given the fact that he moved to a different team. There was no preseason. There was no offseason. And he's still able to perform with a new team, a new coaching staff, new environment at this level. It really is remarkable what this man was able to do this year. He said that was one of his worst days on a football field. Take us back to, to Super Bowl 52 as a young man yourself, your first experience there. What was the build-up week like, first and foremost? What was it like get, getting there as a player and, and seeing all of the madness around it? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but, you know, we had people who had been there before, Michael Strahan, even our coach, Tom Coffin, had been there. And we were very well prepared. We kind of sheltered ourselves away from all the nonsense. Our hotel was like 45, 50 minutes away from all the activities. So it's not like we were in the middle of things or in the thick of things. We were far out and we just isolated ourselves. And, um, you know, we went, we, we went to practice, we came back to the hotel and we just chilled. And so we weren't really involved with all the, all the pregame and all the, you know, pre-week festivities. We just kind of focused on the game and it, it paid dividends for us in the actual game. Clearly. You restricted them to 14 points. You restricted Tom Brady to just the two scores and, that was a lot to do with you guys on that front, the pressure that you got with Steve Spagnolo's defense. Tell us a little bit about how you schemed for Tom Brady that day. Really wasn't that much of a scheme. I think uh, we knew that uh, on that particular day, obviously you had Michael Strahan, who's a Hall of Fame player. You had Justin Tuck, who was coming into his own as one of the best defensive linemen in football. And I was a pro ball, all pro player coming up the other side. So we just had superior players on the defensive line. So all Steve Spagnuolo said really did is he threw in a couple of blitzes here and there, but he said, listen, we're just going to try to get him to hold that ball uh, by, by mixing up our coverages and doing different things to maybe make him not see things as clearly as he used to do. And then we're going to turn you guys loose on the quarterbacks because on the quarterback, because we believe that you guys are superior to the offensive line. And it actually did play out that way. 
I remember sitting down with Spags on Radio Row in Minnesota, what, two, three years ago. And he was adamant. I'm done with coaching. I'm moving on. And now he's <laughs> back in the Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator again. Yeah, I mean, this, this is one of the, the, the brightest football minds that, that we have in the game today. Um, such a, a really good coach. And on top of that, he's an even better person. Him, his whole family, his wife, Maria, lovely people. So I'm happy for all the success that he's having. Man. I, I wish him continued success in the NFL. He deserves it. How do you think that will compare going into this weekend, the Chiefs' defense? I think going into last year, everyone was like, oh, it's offense, offense, offense. And obviously, when you've got Pat Mahomes, that's still the case. But it feels like that defense has taken a real step up in the playoffs. Yeah, if you look at what they were able to do um, last season's playoffs, this was a team that became really dynamic on the defensive side of the football. And I think this year is no difference. This year, throughout the regular season, they played pretty well. And in the postseason, like you said, they stepped up their game uh, e even, even to a higher level. So I think it's going to have a huge impact on the game, what he's going to be able to do, the pressures that he comes with, the coverages and the way they disguise that coverage and the matchups that the matchup problems that he's going to have to present um, to slow down this Tampa Bay offense. It's going to be a really fun game to watch. Is that the way you have to beat Tom Brady? And the kind of reason I ask that, think about Green Bay two weeks ago or yeah. a week ago. Mm -hmm. We all looked at that game and went, they've got a great front. They can get pressure. And then in the first drive, you see them complete three third and longs, drive down the field, score a touchdown with great efficiency. And you're just thinking, you know, how do you stop that man? It's difficult. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Green Bay did adjust and he did some things in the second half to kind of, uh, you know, negate what Tom Brady is good at. And I think Tom Brady's going to have, he's going to have to have a really good look at that. And uh, obviously he's going to have a, he's not going to go out there and throw three interceptions in the second half the way he did in the prior game. Um, he has a couple of weeks now to really adjust and, and think and, and, and isolate and think about exactly what needs to happen. So I think he's going to have a really good game plan going up in, into this game against Kansas City. For the Chiefs, uh, they come back into this off being there last year, bringing so much of that team and so much of that squad. And I asked you earlier what it was like going for the first time. What about that second time with the experience on your shoulder, knowing what game day is going to be like? Did it make the whole thing any easier? Yeah, I think so. I think um, it was pretty much more of the same. We went in with a couple of players who had play played in that um, 2008 Super Bowl, and we were a lot better prepared. But I think the only thing that would happen um, different in the, in the second game was we really expected to win the game. Like, we, we thought we were better than them. We had played them earlier um, that year, and we had beat them then. And so there was no intimidation. There was no uh, aura of the Patriots being this invincible team uh, like the first time when we played them where we were going in. You know, we thought we had a chance, but we, we didn't know we were going to win. <laughs> I think in this particular game, we knew that um, we had a really good chance of winning. I mean, you say the aura of invincibility and you say that we, we are talking about a team that had the first time you faced them, it was literally the aura of invincibility because they had that opportunity yeah. to go and o for only the second time ever. Does that make it yeah. a little bit extra special knowing that you held that back from, from Tom Brady in New England? 100%. Um, you know, I think, you know, the second Super Bowl, we won it, but to me, it's almost like a byproduct. It was the first one that really... Um, that really struck home. And it's the one that I'm really so proud of because of all the things that happened. And um, the fact that we had to play so well and we were directly involved in uh, upsetting the team that was quite frankly, probably the greatest team that had ever been assembled. And um, we stopped them from, from achieving immortality. Um, I'm sad for them, honestly, but I'm happier for us that we were able to do that. Yeah, uh, we all are, trust me. We're all happier for you than we are sad for them. I, the, the, I yeah. think he can cry into his six rings and none of us are going to have any problem yeah. with it. Maybe seven after this weekend. Um, <laughs> there are parallels between yourselves and the Bucks as well. It's amazing. Mm. The other thing that blows my mind about this whole run for Tom Brady is that was his 14th championship game, his 10th Super Bowl, and his first mm. time ever having to play in a wildcard game. So yeah. just tell us a little bit about both times you had to go through it. Three road games to get to the Super Bowl, a wildcard team both times. What do you think that does for a team different to maybe someone who's had the bye and had the home games? Yeah, I think for us, it's even, it even goes deeper than that, Will, because we weren't even a short of playoff spots in like the final two weeks. So we were, we were in the playoffs before we even got to the playoffs. Like we had been playing playoff games for like three, four weeks before the playoffs even started. So there's a level of pressure that builds up 
over uh, over that period of time and you having to win and win and win just to stay in the playoff hunt. And then you get in the playoffs and then you're in the wild card and you got to travel here and travel there and play all these people. And as you're winning those games, you know, there's a strength and there's a bond that comes from that, from doing things that nobody gives you a chance to do. And by the time you're in the Super Bowl, you're so strong and you're so formidable that you really feel like you can do anything. And that's exactly what happened for us. Love that. The, the last thing I want to ask you about, and another guy who you played with in that second Super Bowl, JPP, is on the other side mm. of the ball going up against the Chiefs O-line, who we know they're missing both their starting tackles. I mean, if you saw an opposition in a game like this missing both starting tackles, surely you'd be licking your chops and going, yep, yeah, that's a matchup I love, except it's Patrick Mahomes back there. 100%. Um, but, you know, Andy Reid is going to have something now. I don't think he's just going to let those guys just go out there and feast on those offensive tackles. He's seen how that how that happened before. Um, actually, I was in a game in that same 07 season against the Philadelphia Eagles where Andy Reid was the coach, and they had a guy who hadn't started a game before, and they just left him out there, and it, it, it didn't turn out really well for him. I ended up having six sacks. So Andy Reid has, has learned from that, and he's adjusted, and he has never allowed something like that to happen again. And I don't think now it's going to be any different. He's not just going to allow Jason Pierre-Paul, who's probably one of the top five defensive ends of football, to just feast on on whoever the offensive tackle is because Shaq Barrett is on the other side, and he's going to be coming off that edge too. They have a really dynamic front. So he's going to do some different things to try to confuse them. He's going to slide the line. He's going to chip. He's going to line the tight end up in, in a nasty split is what we like to call it, whereas the, the defensive end doesn't know where to line up. If he lines up outside the, the tight end, he's too wide. If he lines up inside, then he has to worry about the tight end cracking down on him before he leaves. So he's going to do all these different things to, to mix up the, um, the, the, the looks for the defensive ends. I think both teams are going to be in, in, in big trouble. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, there's a guy who understands already the game and, and adjusting their protections. You've got two quarterbacks here who are ready to go. So uh, we've mentioned it, a couple of former teammates, a former coach of yours, OC. Which way do you think this weekend goes? And, and do you have a bit of a rooting interest either way? Honestly, I, I don't know which, game, which way the game is going to go, man. For me, I find it really difficult to call the Super Bowls until I've seen like the Saturday walkthrough and I see how the teams behave, if they're loose, if they're stiff, if they're tight. You know, I like to gather all the data and all the information before I make that prediction. So I never really do that until the day of the game. And it's worked out pretty well. But do I have a rude interest? I, I don't really know. Um, you know, I, Steve Spagnuolo is a, he's a really good friend of mine, man. The greatest coach I've played for as far as defensively. And uh, we still speak to this day. Um, Sam Madison, he's the cornerback, he's the cornerbacks coach over there who I know really well. Obviously, Dave Merritt is, is the safety's coach also. So all everybody in Kansas City, I know when you know I'm rooting for them to win. <clears throat> but on the other side, you have Jason Pierre Paul, who he's like my brother, he's a really good friend of mine. And so I want him to win. And I know Tom Brady, I had a conversation with him yesterday. I actually fell in love with the guy. So I want him <laughs> to win too. So I, I, it's, it's just really tough for me, Will. I don't know who I, who I want to win this game. I just want them all to do well. It's difficult not to fall in love with Tom Brady. The guy's been drinking from the fountain of youth. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, OC, yeah. genuine pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, do check out, not only will OC be on the TV coverage this week, but 888 Sport, the show he does with Steve-O, the madman. Absolutely superb. Well worth your time. Uh, love getting a chance to chat with you, OC. And hopefully next year, we'll be doing it in LA on Radio Row and doing it proper. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to it.